Hello, viewers. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're brewing with enzymes. We're brewing delicious Korean rice wine, makgeolli, with enzymes. Every time we're brewing, we're always brewing with enzymes. But what's different today is that I'm adding some purified enzymes to the brew. And the question is, will this fix your problem? Well, for sure, this is going to affect the brewing process, but this is not going to go like I expected. So this might solve one common brewing problem, but does it introduce other problems? Will this fix your brewing problem? Let me just tell you that I'm going to be surprised more than once. So let's see what happens. So a quick review. The basic ingredients for makgeolli are rice, nuruk, and water. Nuruk is the special Korean fermentation agent, and nuruk contains amylase enzymes already. And the amylase converts the starch in the rice into sugar that the yeast can then convert into alcohol. So the amylase is essential for the brewing process. But what is purified amylase enzyme. It's, it's an industrial product produced by fungi or bacteria, and it's used in commercial makgeolli production. And you can see it in the ingredient list on the label, for example, as Zhangjie Hyoso. And here's a Korean online store that sells purified amylase enzyme. And here's the product description. So here it says the saccharification power, the SP, is 15,000, which is 50 times more powerful than Nuruk. And Nuruk is at 300 SP. But I'm not in Korea, so I couldn't order this product. But I was able to get these packets of amylase used for beer brewing. One is labeled as just amylase enzyme, and the other as glucoamylase enzyme. There are different kinds of amylase that break down starch somewhat differently, so I thought I should try both of these and see if they have different effects. I have links in the description if you're interested. I'm going to brew the standard Danyangju recipe single-stage brew, one kilogram sweet rice, 90 grams nuruk, and one liter of water. But I'm also going to add some purified amylase enzyme. How much should I add? Well, the package says one half teaspoon per five gallons. And uh, that's a lot more than I make. I don't make five gallons at a time. But on the other hand, beer brewing uses more water than my makgeolli recipe. So anyhow, half a teaspoon would be around one gram. Um, and the Korean description of the Korean product says to use 0.1% to 2% of the weight of rice the weight of the starch, so that would be 0.1 grams to 2 grams. And uh, if we assume the scarification power is 15,000, calculating from the SP, one kilogram of rice would need only 2 grams of this purified enzyme. Now, I don't actually know the scarification power of my amylase packets, I'm just assuming it's the same as the Korean one. And since I'm still using the full amount of Nuruk, I think I'll use half a teaspoon, one gram. That's going to be a reasonable amount. I should be able to see the effect. So here's my plan. Three jars of Danyangju, one kilogram sweet rice, one liter of water, 90 grams of Nuruk, two grams of the wine yeast, uh, half a teaspoon, and then each jar gets some amylase enzyme. So jar A gets half a teaspoon of amylase enzyme, jar B gets half a teaspoon of glucoamylase enzyme, and jar C gets both. So what should I expect from adding amylase? Well, the packets give vague statements, just increases fermentability and increases attenuation. So that's very vague, but I do expect faster scarification and more complete fermentation and more alcohol in the end and less jigami. So that's my prediction, but let's see what happens. Let's brew. 
So I'm going to go through the brewing process very quickly in this video. I want to focus on the difference the enzymes make. So please watch my earlier videos for more detail on these brewing steps. So the first thing I do is put the Nuruk in the sun. That's the Bopche method. Then I gently wash three kilograms of sweet rice, soak it for three hours, then drain for 30 minutes, then steam for 35 minutes on full steam, and then 10 more minutes on low. And spread out the rice to cool. That's the go to bop. Okay, while I'm waiting for the rice to cool, I'll bring in the nuruk from the sun. I'll soak each 90 grams of nuruk in 200 milliliters of water, add half a teaspoon of wine yeast to each, and then add the enzymes. So half a teaspoon of the amylase for A, half a teaspoon of the glucoamylase for B, and half a teaspoon of each for C. And then I stir each of these for a minute. Oh, you might want to know, why do I use wine yeast here? Well, because I know it has a high alcohol tolerance and I want to be sure that, uh, that the fermentation goes well, produces as much alcohol as possible for this experiment. I'm using wine yeast instead of relying on the natural yeast in the Nuruk. Okay, now that the Godubop is cool, divide it evenly among the three jars, add the Nuruk enzyme yeast mixture and 800 milliliters of water to each jar. So a total of one liter of water each. And mix each jar by hand for five minutes. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when I publish a new video every week on the subject of rustic Asian rice wine. And please share this video wherever it is appropriate. And I really appreciate your help in spreading the word about rustic Asian rice wine. Clean up any mess on the jars, uh, leave the lids loose, and put them in the cabinet to ferment. The next day, let's examine closely, use all of our senses. It does seem to be brewing faster than normal. I'm, I'm going to listen to each jar, taste a drop of each of them, and feel the texture when I stir each jar. And this is what I notice. All of the jars have a kind of fruity, overripe, um, smell to them, like overripe peach maybe. It's, um, they taste sweet. Uh, only jar C has some sourness, but it's really sweet. Um, jars A and C have more liquid, and jar B is stickier and has less liquid. And you can see that. And let's listen to each jar as well. Here's, here's jar A. And here's B. And finally, jar C. And I think this is a lot more bubbles than normal. I, um, I put the microphone inside the jar to capture these sounds, but I think this is more than normal. I'm also going to do a match test to show you something interesting. The match doesn't go out. Well, I, I'm not sure of the explanation for this because there are so many bubbles now. I don't know why there wouldn't be enough carbon dioxide to extinguish the match. Hmm. Well, anyhow, I'll stir each jar for a minute now. And that's, that's how I noticed that jar B just feels stickier. Now it's day two, and jar B has liquid now, not pretty much the same as the other two jars. They all still smell really fruity, and it's a weird fruit smell. I stirred twice yesterday, and I'll stir twice again today. B is still stickier. And today, when I do the match test, the match goes out. Now on day three, we see that jar B looks different again. The rice is floating in a large middle layer. So let's, let's watch the fermentation progress day by day. 
the rice is breaking down into a uniform layer on the bottom with a cap on the top of more solid rice with visible bubbles. That cap of rice is, is larger in, in jar B. I want to say again that um, new root contains all kinds of enzymes already. So the purified enzymes that I added, they're not adding anything new but since they're concentrated, they are really increasing the amount of particular enzymes that are already present in the new root. Now on day 10, doing the match test, the match still goes out, but with some difficulty. So maybe we're close to the end. And on day 11, the match does not go out. I'm, I'm very curious about how this tastes. So it's time to filter and bottle this. I'm going to filter each of them into bottles, uh, measure the leftovers, the jigami, and then add 200 milliliters water to the jigami so I can squeeze out a bonus bowl to taste today. Again, I'll just go through this quickly and show you a summary. And if you want more details, please watch my earlier videos. One of the reasons that I do the bonus bowl is that by squeezing the jigami twice, that reduces some of the variation in squeezing. So the amount of jigami depends on how hard I squeeze. So by squeezing twice, I hope the measurement of the jigami is more meaningful. So here's the jigami summary. So after the first filtering, each of the jars had more than 300 grams of jigami. And after the second filtering for the bonus bowl, each of them had less than 300 grams. Seems like jar C had a, a little bit less. That might be enough to be meaningful. I think what is meaningful here is that the amount of jigami is not particularly small. In fact, this is more jigami than I expected, and it's more than some previous brews with exactly the same kind of rice and nuruk, where I did not add any additional enzymes. So clearly adding enzymes did not reduce the amount of jigami. Now let's taste the bonus bowls. I'm eager to taste each of them. I know this is just preliminary, and I'm going to taste the real brew after a few days in the fridge. Here's my summary. So for all of the jars, they're not sour, not carbonated, not sour at all. There's a weird fruit aroma and a grassy aroma and taste, sort of vegetable aroma and taste, which is maybe like the leftover water after boiling broccoli or something. Sort of unpleasant Jar A is the cloudiest and has the most of that grassy taste. Jar B is sweeter, and Jar C is the sweetest. So that's what I taste in these bonus bowls. So it's sort of disappointing. The taste is not good. If you were having problems with the sourness in your brews, you might want to use enzymes. But if this was the final taste, I would not recommend using enzymes at all because the taste just seems unbalanced and weird. But I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I've just tasted the bonus bowl so far, and I need to taste the real brew after a few days. So three days later, I taste all three brews. I pour off the more transparent layer, the Changju, for each. And then I mix it up and pour off the wanju, that's the undiluted makgeolli. So I have six glasses to taste here. Um, but the taste is, is so different now. So here's my summary. So now there's a real mineral taste at the end. The, gr the grassy taste is gone. Maybe still some vegetable aroma, but the, the, the majority of that bad taste is gone. Um, it does seem like there's more alcohol. Um, comparing the comparing the jars, A is the cloudiest still and has the most mineral taste at the end. And jar B remains sweeter, and jar C is the sweetest of the three, even even maybe caramel taste. This uh, the flavor has really improved. That mineral that mineral taste that's a legitimate flavor. That's that's a positive aspect of traditional Korean alcohol having a little bit salty or rocky taste, like a bit like licking a rock, 
it's a bit astringent at the end. That's a good flavor. That's that's much better than just the overpowering sweetness I was tasting before. So out of these three, I really like Jar A the most. And Jar A was made with the packet labeled just as amylase. So here's my conclusions. Adding extra enzymes produced rapid bubbling early. It did not reduce the brewing time, and it did not reduce the jigami. And it produced a weird, fruity, grassy vegetable aroma that luckily reduced over time. It did seem unbalanced at the beginning, like there was just too much sugar too early. But two things it did do, it eliminated sourness. This brew had very little tartness at all, and I could taste more alcohol. So if your brewing problem is sourness, and that that is a kind of common complaint some brewers have, oh, why is my brew too sour? Is there anything I can do? Well, then this might be an answer. You might want to try to add some amylase enzyme, maybe less than I added, but it should have an effect. And for me, this really reduced any aspect of sourness. In the end, after waiting for the bad flavors to dissipate, it, the result, the brew tasted good. So, so that's what I found at the end. A bit of up and down in the middle, not straightforward to figure out what was happening, but it, it, I think adding a lot of extra enzymes does throw things out of balance, and it could wreck your brew. So just, I, I would be gentle with the amount you add. So I hope you found this interesting. Let me know in the comments what you're brewing, anything interesting that you're doing. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, thank you for watching.